Hey there, this is Sora with another UI workshop from Learn to Raid. In this episode, we're going to talk about shadowed unit frames. I don't know about you, but one of the most frustrating things to me about the default WoW interface is the lack of ability to move and customize unit frames. If you're not really looking to overhaul your whole interface, but would like some flexibility with your unit frames, a mod like this one is a good option. Let's see what happens when you first install it. As you can see, you're greeted with some test frames. Let's move them around a little so you can see them better. I'll show you what they first look like with their default settings, though let's enable raid frames so you can see those too. Alright, off to a random BG to see what shadowed unit frames looks like without any customization. The first thing you'll notice is that both party and raid frames are showing. There is an option to disable the party frame as well on a raid, which would be helpful here. You can see raid and power levels, missing health text, and raid marker icons on the raid frames. The party frames are bigger and include 3D portraits and buffs. There is also the player frame with the pet frame attached, the target frame with buffs and debuffs, as well as target of target and target's target of target. Health bars are colored by class and power bars are colored by power type, such as blue for mana. Okay, so now that we've seen what the default settings look like, let's head back over to the configuration. To open up the config, you can just type in slash suf. This will bring up the general section. On the first tab, you can lock or unlock the frames. Unlocking them will put up dummy frames that make it easier for you to see what your adjustments look like. Here you can adjust bar textures and border styles, and there is an advanced option that opens up even more options like disabling OmniCC. Let's enable this so that we don't miss anything. On this tab, you can also change the global font settings and bar color in alpha. And at the bottom, you can set the spells by which it decides when you're out of range of someone. The second tab is for colors, pretty self-explanatory here. The profiles tab is pretty standard, so for example if you had a profile for another character that you wanted to use for this character, you could just load it up here. The fourth tab, text management, lets you add more text for use with tags that can be placed in the empty health or power bar. Let's create a test one called YouTube. Last in this section is the Layout Manager tab. Here you can import or export configurations from or to other users. In the Enabled Unit section, you can choose which frames you'd like to display. This is where I turned on the RAID frames earlier. Unit configuration is where you can really get into the nitty gritty of how each frame looks. As you can see in the front of this section, there are already some tips on how to accomplish frequently asked about features, which is very helpful. Then if you expand the menu, you'll see a list of each frame type as well as global settings. Here you can check off multiple units you can edit at the same time without having to go through each of them individually. Let's take a look at the player unit as an example of what options you'll have available to you. There are a lot of options and shadowed unit frames is pretty easy to figure out. The player portrait is enabled by default but you can change it here. The unit frames also have a border option that you can set to show up on mouse over, for example. And it might be a good idea to have it set to show on curable debuff for your raid frames as well. At the bottom you can adjust the combat text, pretty simple. Over at the frame tab you can change the overall size of the unit frame, and set how you want it anchored. Anchoring a frame will basically attach it to another selected frame. It's easier to show it than try to explain, so let's switch over to target to get a better idea. As you can see, the target frame is anchored to the player frame by the right corner and is 50 pixels, I think, away from the x-axis, so to the right. Increase it to 200 and you can see it moves much farther away. When you move the player frame, the target frame follows. This makes it much easier to line up frames perfectly without having to drag them around individually. The Bars tab lets you adjust the settings for various bars. For example, you could disable the power bar if you wanted to. You can color power bars by either class or by power type. Enabling an XP rep bar will add a smaller bar at the bottom of the frame that tracks your rep or XP. You can also set the color of the health bar to be class colored, a defined color, or color based on aggro. Shadowed Unit Frames also comes with an option to turn on a cast bar, which will show up at the bottom of the unit. You're able to further adjust cast bar anchors, font, and icon settings too. To adjust the size of the individual bar, you'll need to head over to the Widget Size tab. Notice as I'm making some of the bars higher, 
they squish the other bars in order to make room. The bar size is relative to the actual frame size, so to make the bars bigger without making the other ones too small, you'll have to adjust the frame size too. And now on to auras. Here you can enable debuffs and buffs and adjust their placement and behavior. By default, they're disabled on the player frame. When I check Enable Buffs, the player buffs appear below the player unit frame. The same goes for debuffs. And here's what it looks like when you have both selected. It also enlarges your own debuffs by default, so this temporal displacement debuff is bigger than the others. Indicators are little icons or text that can appear on unit frames, like for combat or resting status, and dungeon roll icons. Let's unlock the frames for a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. So now you can see the size of the roll icon changing, as well as the position when I change the Y offset. I can make the raid target icon bigger too. You'll see the skull mark changing below. I briefly mentioned text and tags before. Remember, we created that new YouTube text on the health bar. Here you can choose what sort of text you want to go there, or you can even write your own for fun. If you pick sex, for example, it shows female on the health bar. Let's take a look at some of the raid unit settings. The range indicator is usually handy. It will fade a player frame out when they're out of your spell range. I think I'll enable a border highlight for curable debuffs too. On the raid tab, I think I want to make the raid frames horizontal. So I'll change the row growth to right, column growth to down, max columns and max unit to five. It looks a little messed up right now, but a quick toggle of the frame walk seems to fix it. On second thought, you'll probably want to set the max columns to 8 to make room for 40-man raids, just in case. In the bar section, I'll set it to color the health bar by aggro. And I also want to set it to a static color. The color will be whatever you've set static to be in, the general section, colors tab. In auras, I want debuffs to show. But since this is for my mage, I'll just set it to show only the ones I can cure. I'll also have to fiddle with the size, position, and amount to show so that it doesn't look too crowded. While we're here, let's hide the party frames when in a raid and hop on over to the hide blizzard section to hide the default raid frames. Zone configuration lets you decide what to hide depending on whether you're in an arena, BG, party, or raid. The tag section is where you can add new tags, or take a look at how the standard ones are configured. This section is a little bit more advanced. Now let's head into a random BG again so you can see how the frames look with our edits. As you can see, my ray frames do go horizontal now instead of vertical, and they're colored fuchsia instead of by class. You can see frames becoming more transparent when they're out of range, and there are some debuff icons showing that I can decurse as well. And you can see the cast bar showing on the player frame. I hope this guide to shadowed unit frames was helpful for you. As always, if you'd like to suggest a topic for the next UI workshop, please let us know over at learntoraid.com slash forum slash UI suggest. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and watch our stream on the theme live. Thanks for watching and have a great day.